If you're using a recorder for the first time, you're not gonna really know the piece of gear until you've had a chance to record with it. So I always recommend people record and then play back their audio before they take their piece of equipment out in the field. The problem with most recorders is that it's just a knob that says one through 10, but nobody really knows what those units are. In general, when you're using a piece of equipment for the first time, I like to bring it up to around the 70% mark. That's usually where audio tends to live on most recorders. I like to live around 70% because that gives me about 30% of headroom in case the talent decides to get louder and project their voice. I'm not gonna clip or distort. I've got enough room for that to happen. Multi-track recorders are more popular and that gives us a lot more flexibility in the edit with which microphones we want to select. An ISO track is essentially it's a microphone on a separate track of audio. Personally, I like to keep all of my audio separate. I like to record all ISO tracks. I don't like to mix in real time on a set. I like to give the mixing option to the people in post-production. It's a great tip to make sure that you slate each take audibly. So even though you've got the slate information on the take, the person that's listening to the audio clip doesn't see the slate itself. So they can only hear what's on the audio clip. So at the front of every take, make sure that you give the name of the scene and the take number. The purpose of a slate is so that you have a sync point for the editor to use to match camera and audio together. This is when you're using double system. A double system means that you have two different units recording your production. They record the image on the camera and the audio on the recorder, but later they have to be put together. This is done with a sync point provided by the clapper. You can hear the clap sound. That will create a spike in the waveform. The editor then looks for the first frame in which the clapper actually touches and then they match that up with the audio clip that actually shows the spike in the audio waveform. Putting those two together will create a sync point and then everything moving forward will then be in sync. When you're using a single system, you don't need to use the clapper other than for the information, such as the take or the scene. If you forget to use the clapper uh, and you remember halfway through the shot, no worries, you can actually do what's called a tail slate, meaning that you use the clapper at the end of the shot. This is also done by holding the clapper upside down so that the editor knows that this is a tail slate. If you don't have a slate, uh, you can still use anything to create a sync point. The easiest way to do it is with your hands. Right? You wanna make sure that if you're using multiple cameras, all of the cameras can see your hands coming together. If you're using a slate, make sure that all of the cameras get to see the slate information and can see the clapper actually coming together. This makes editing so much easier. I know, I've done this for a long time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Until next time, make some noise.